I wanted to introduce myself um, in a in a more in-depth way and say that like all the success that I've had, um, which is minimal, honestly, uh, but it's all been pretty much stuff I wasn't paying attention to while I was doing it. Um, and so like because I've been asked to speak at conferences, I've had to like go in and examine my choices. And um, this is me trying to sort through that and explain why I made the choices I made, which I think have served me really well. Um, and it has three brackets of things. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about with connecting with people via internet is knowing the lay of the land. Um, you have to know whenever a social media site comes up and whatever your business is, or for me it's just my name, you have to claim it immediately. Even if you don't plan on using that website, take it now the second it's available to you because that is just like the first step to making your life easier. Um, I think it's important to note that each site has its own language and they're like the easy ones like on Tumblr you blog stuff and on Twitter you just out reply people but there are more intricate languages within each of these things like Tumblr is not okay with you talking about Facebook. Don't do it you will upset everyone. And then if you're not like complying with the rules of the website, then you might as well not be on there because you want positive reactions, not get out of here, you don't belong. Um, so I think that also speaks to the, the different types of people that exist on each site. Like Tumblr is a really specific type of person um, and I get along with those people really well but also YouTube has a specific type of person and Twitter and you kind of have to um, play to each group of people. It's your job to speak to them on their turf the way they want. So um, the pictures I have below are the same post on three websites. Um, it's about how I accidentally dyed my hair purple, trying to make it less of an orangey blonde. Um, and on Tumblr I got like, you know, 20 something, I don't really know what the number is. And on Twitter I got like a few responses and then on Facebook I got 180 comments. Usually I'm pretty happy with like 20 comments, like that's a lot, that's a successful post. But for some reason Facebook was just all about my purple hair. And it's all about learning what makes each group happy because now I know the next time I shave my head, go straight to Facebook. Um, I think it's really important to have a voice on all of these websites. For me, I make sure that any time it's supposed to be my voice, it is. I've had like an assistant before where I was like, yeah, just like promote that show. And then I look at it and I'm like, that is atrocious. Why would you say it that way? <laughs> um, having a voice and, and being like a clear person um, with a personality that doesn't change or, you know, you can change a little bit. <laughs> um, but don't like sound like a robot, be a human. And I think, um, I wish my little pictures were better, but those are screenshots of Taco Bell, which is a corporation, but they have one person running their Twitter and that person is brilliant. They're killing it on social media. A year ago, the conversation about Taco Bell was about the quality of their meat and right now, it's about how hilarious they are and how they're interacting with people. Um, they have relationships with other social media heavy hitters. A friend of mine named Tyler Oakley, um, they have him host parties, they have him do videos, and he spreads the word, the gospel of Taco Bell, and no one minds. He's promoting a, a major company, and everyone thinks it's, really cute and fun and silly and he like goes there at 2 a.m. and he's like wow tacos and everyone's like yeah tacos I love Taco Bell Taco Bell is just a fast food restaurant McDonald's could have done this Burger King could have done this but they didn't they're not smart enough to give themselves a personality a voice um, I being a musician and you know I 
I don't have like political views that I display everywhere and I don't like my voice is just kind of silly and then also please buy my music. That's my voice. But I found a place on Tumblr for my feminist voice. Um, and I talked on Tumblr and only Tumblr, I didn't put this anywhere else, about an interaction I'd had on Facebook, someone that was very upset about the way I dressed and that I had shown cleavage in a picture and that my music is wholesome and my image is wholesome and that I had taken that away by showing the tops of my boobs and I was infuriated. I wrote back to him, I wrote a, a blog entry about body shaming and body policing and how it's not okay and it is not the responsibility of women to dumb themselves down or cover themselves up for the sake of men because men are people too and have self-control and respect. Um, I posted this on Tumblr. It got more posts than any sort of music promotion I've put up on Tumblr. More reblogs, more likes, and people have come to me and told me they found me through that feminist blog chain, through other feminist people that they follow, and had no idea that I was a musician except for this uh, rude dude talking about how my wholesome music was being ruined by my chest. Um, and a quote I made in my um, message back to him, which was, I have boobs and morals and the two have nothing to do with each other, it became like a rah-rah, sis boom ba for feminism on Tumblr. Um, and so I gained fans through like a totally unintentional but um, self-expressive way. Um, my next pillar of social media is reaching out. Um, once you're on these sites and once you've got something to say and you've found your voice, you have to interact. You have to find other people and involve yourself in that community. And it can be with your fans, and I make a really concerted effort to respond to people on Twitter and Facebook, and I do a lot of it. But there's also other people that are on your level. Like if you're a business, you can reach out to other businesses. I reached out to Rivers Cuomo from Weezer because I knew that we were playing the same festival, and I actually called out to my Twitter followers to have them uh, ask him to play with me, and he responded, yes. Um, and then it, that kind of um, led to one of the most embarrassing moments of my life, which I then published on YouTube. And that's this video. That's the crowd for Weezer. We were not in right today. Another fun anecdote from that show is when I got on stage to sound check, which was obviously useless, um, the crowd started chanting. Someone in the front row was like, what's your name? And I was like, Julia. And the crowd started going, Julia, Julia. And I was like, I have never felt more cool. And then that kind of died after a little bit and they started chanting, ice cream, ice cream, like so much more intensely than my name. People are fickle. That's a lesson. Um, so, okay, uh, I'm gonna go to my cards now. Um, yeah, I would say that all of this social media stuff and being really involved is the lowest bar. It's the least you can do. For me, interacting with people on the internet, spending a few hours on social media every day is the absolute least effort I can put in for the people that support my career. They have no reason to, just like Emily said, if you build it, they will come. No, just good music doesn't get found. I don't have the right to a, a musical career just because I make music that I think is good. There are talented people all over the world that 
make music and put their heart and soul into it and have never gotten paid a single penny for it. Um, I, I used to not take music seriously for that reason. I just felt like how could I possibly ask people for money when I make music for my own selfish reasons and it took a long time to reconcile that undeserving feeling. Um, so my first like real leap into taking music seriously where I, I realized I needed money for it was to make a studio album. Um, and I had heard about Kickstarter and I was like, well, I can just approach it the same way as I have with everything else, just be really honest and transparent. Um, and so my Kickstarter campaign, which I launched uh, two years ago, raised $77,888 in 30 days. Uh, my original goal was 15,000. Um, and I think that that is because I was so honest and concise. That is a huge, like I could give a whole speech about being concise, just be short. Even when there's no 140 character restriction on what you have to say, just a 20 minute presentation is all you need, you know? Um, I think that my campaign was successful because of all of the work that I had put in with people before I launched it. And then the way that I approached it, it was called Julia Noons would be nothing without me. And I truly feel that way. I think of my fans as this unbelievable support system that I try to be deserving of every day. And then I just made a really awesome album. Um, flash forward to present day. I've just joined a website called Patreon. Um, created by another YouTube musician named Jack Conti. And he basically solved his own problem and inadvertently solved the problem for the rest of us who make a steady stream of content, but had no real way of knowing how that was going to affect our monetary situations. Like if I put out a YouTube video and it gets millions of hits, I know that I've done something good, but I don't know necessarily if someone bought my album because of that one video or just how effective it was. Patreon makes it so when I put out a video, right now, as of yesterday, there are 156 people collectively giving me $1,200. Um, you can use Patreon for exclusive content, but just like I try to give my fans everything they want. I keep my stuff free, and you only pay me on Patreon if you feel like it. And I think that type of goodwill is, is like blatantly effective. Um, but I, people get scared about like not requiring people to pay. But when you have as close of a relationship as I do with my fans, I think you can earn that um, trust with them without having to require money. Um, I wanted to close my talk. Ooh, I went so fast. <laughs> um, I want to close my talk by bringing all of this offline. Um, for me, making personal connections is so much more meaningful. And as a business, it's so much more meaningful than any sort of social media. And for a business, I think that's going to like real life meetings and coming to conferences and networking at these like party type deals. For a musician, it's simple, it's just touring. Um, I actually just pl played a conference in California a few weeks ago. And when I checked back from the previous year's conference to this year's conference, I had played 125 shows. Um, so I really like playing live music and that's because of that connection that you get with the audience. And I have found a new level of intimacy when it comes to playing shows in living room tours. Um, we have a host that volunteers to let 50 strangers into their home, and we sell tickets online, and uh, if you buy the ticket, that's when you get the address. So the night of the show, only people that bought tickets, only people that are supposed to be there show up. And I play totally unplugged. We do a question and answer session in the middle of the show. And I stay after to take pictures. We had a Polaroid camera for our last tour. 
I sign merch, give hugs, and the relationships that I form with those people are for life. I mean, forget 35,000 Twitter followers. I have 50 people in Boone, North Carolina that cried with me about a song I wrote when I was 16. None of us are ever going to forget that night, and whenever I come anywhere close to Boone, North Carolina, I'm gonna see all of them again. And I think that that connection is something that is so important to me that is hard to apply to business, but you have to. You have to think of customers as people because they have just as many thoughts and feelings as your best friend. And I treat all of my fans like their friends. I treat them with love and respect. Um, I have an, a short example video of what a living room show is like. I assume you're talking about the ones with like the whole bunch of different layers take me like days of like editing and filming and uh, putting on the same outfit <laughs> 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 I don't know why like I'm friends with the band Pomplamoose and they were always in different outfits in all of the different shots and like I don't know why that seemed like such, like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't put on clean clothes today. <laughs> one, two, three, and then we're gonna do one with Flash. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm being your mom right now. There's no mics, there's no amps or anything. You feel like they're playing directly to you. You're totally just enclosed with the sound of the music and just like, it was like chills and everything. It was pretty crazy. It was a lot more intimate and you could tell and feel your passion. And it was just, I don't know, it was really nice. Thanks. Um, so I'm going to end by quoting a mutual friend of mine and Emily's, Stephen Beer. He once said that I have a love affair with my fans. And I think that's really true. Um, I just try every day to be worth all of their love and support the way you would with like someone you're dating. <laughs> um, and I hope that you walk away with a new respect and love for anyone that supports your business, be it a customer or a business partner or an investor. I think it's so important to remember that they are people and that you need to also be a person and not like a promotion robot. So, promoting myself, come talk to me after the show, hear all of my stuff. Yeah. Stay.